everyone, this is Sarah Roden, eSmart Mental Health Consultant and Clinic Therapist at the Youth Service Bureau. Today I wanted to take some time to share with you 10 helpful ways to be able to support young children during the coronavirus crisis. My first tip is to manage your own anxiety in relation to the corona crisis. This means understanding your own feelings about the changes in your routine. Allow yourself to feel nervous and remind yourself that this feeling is not permanent. Allow yourself to feel disappointed that you aren't able to go on the vacation you planned. Allow yourself to feel overwhelmed due to working from home and trying to manage your kids. Focus on what you can control, such as being able to turn off the news when it becomes too much, managing your attitude, and finding fun things to do in your house versus what you cannot control, such as how long this is gonna last, the amount of toilet paper that's left in stores, or the actions of others. Keep in mind that children can sense when we feel worried or upset, which impacts their feelings and behaviors. By managing your own anxiety, you'll be able to validate the big feelings that they are experiencing. Take time to process any worries they may be having. And when appropriate, share your worries and how you are remaining positive during this time. Be mindful of your nonverbal communication and the language that you use when explaining the coronavirus. Remember, we don't always know what children hear and we wanna help address any misleading information. The third tip is to maintain regular routines. This is much easier said than done. A question you can ask yourself is, what routines can I continue to keep in place for my child and myself? Children thrive off of structure and knowing what's expected of them. Try to keep morning routines, meal times, and bedtime the same as they were prior to the crisis. Identify what routines you can continue to maintain during this time for yourself, such as your morning coffee or taking a shower at night. The next tip is to use visuals to reinforce structure. Pictures are helpful for children to understand what happens first and what's coming next. In the classroom, teachers use visuals every day to indicate different activities throughout their day. Take some time to create visuals at home that illustrate the plan for the day. You can print pictures off of the internet or you can include your child in the activity by having them draw different activities of the day, such as getting dressed in the morning, watching a movie, playing outside, or taking a nap. Make sure if you are a parent working from home to include visuals that help depict what you are doing too. For example, during lunchtime, you want to answer emails on your computer. Have your child draw a picture of a computer and them eating to help them pair both of the activities together. Be sure to hang your visuals somewhere in the house that is easily accessible to both you and your family members. To make the visuals more fun, include the child in checking off what has been completed today and what comes next. Another helpful visual is using a timer, which can indicate when that next activity is happening. You could use your microwave or your oven in your kitchen. The fifth tip is to adjust your expectations. Remember, this is something that you and your child have never experienced together before. Adjust your expectations when it comes to completing schoolwork, cleaning the house, and even screen time. Cut yourself some slack during these circumstances by adjusting your limits on screen time and other limits set in your house. When it comes to schoolwork, acknowledge that your child and you are doing the best given the situation. The next tip is to get up and start moving. Schedule time in you and your child's day for movement. Get creative with activities such as having a dance party, playing hide and seek throughout the house, taking daily family walks or bike rides, or doing an online yoga video. Children need time to expel their energy. If you are sitting at a computer at home for most of the day, take a break every hour to stretch, walk to get a drink of water, or go up and down the steps. You can include your child in your break from the computer to help motivate and remind you that moving is important. The seventh tip is to schedule special time with your child. Special time is one-on-one -on -one time with your child engaging in an activity that he or she chooses without other distractions. Even though you are physically present with your child all day, it does not mean they are receiving the kind of interaction they crave, 
because mentally you are juggling a lot of things. Be realistic about how much time you can spend one-on-one -on -one with them. It could be 15 minutes or it could be 40. Either way, schedule this time in your plan for the day and remind them when it will happen. Remember, the more positive attention you give to a child, the less likely they are to engage in attention-seeking behaviors. The next tip is to stay in touch virtually with family and friends. This is especially important during this time of uncertainty. Plan time for phone calls and video chats that include your children. Family members can engage children in conversation by reading them a book, playing Simon Says, or playing Hangman. Make this time special for your family. The ninth tip is to practice regular self-care. Self-care is not selfish, and I would venture to say it is critical to your survival at this time. The best way to support your children is to take care of yourself. Know your limits and when you need a timeout. Increase all of your self-care practices during this time, whether it's talking to friends, cooking your favorite meal, taking a bath, going for a run, or indulging in a box of cookies. Schedule self-care into your routine and make this a priority. And the final, most important tip is to be kind to yourself. Know that you're doing your best with what you have. Learn to validate yourself and focus on your strengths. Ask yourself, what's going well today? Know when to ask for help and when you've reached your limit. Remind yourself that this will not last forever. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and learn other strategies to help children during the coronavirus outbreak. If you have any questions about eSmart services, please call 410-876-4449 or visit our website at www.esmartcarol.net.